All right, everybody, thank you all for standing by. Uh, as usual, Coach will have some opening comments, then we'll go to questions in the room, and if we have time at the end, we'll go to questions virtually via Zoom. So, Coach, whenever you're ready, take it away. All right, uh, well, unbelievable moment. You know, it was a great opportunity for our team tonight, and, uh, you know, they seized the moment, and that's what it's all about. That was a special one uh, for sure. Fun to be a part of it. I really appreciate our fans. I mean, what a – what a – I mean that was Death Valley at its at its best tonight. I mean it was it was awesome uh, to to just uh, <clears throat> be able to tap into that energy uh, that was that was coming. It was just incredible. And um, but man, the credit goes to those players. Um, I love their effort. I love their their toughness. I love their heart. I love their belief. Um, you know, they're just their grit. Uh, just, you know, next man up mentality. Uh, really, really proud of them. And I told them in the locker room, if we could bottle that up, man, you just bottle that up, that, that's, that's special. I mean, it's really special uh, to be a part of, of that. Uh, when you have that many people, you know, all just giving it all they got, laying it on the line, fighting for each other, uh, you know, to be in a locker room like that is special. So I'm just, just thankful to have had the opportunity <clears throat> proud of this group. You know, this can this this team is getting better. We're still not perfect. And I thought we left a lot out there. Uh man, there was some, you know, a couple field goals should be touchdowns, missed a few plays. Uh and um uh, but I'm just I I'm really proud of them. Uh, I thought we won the trenches, you know, something we didn't do last year. Uh so, you know, Shipley was four point three a carry and I think I think they were like one point six a carry. I think that's the that's the fewest yards rushing they've had against us since 2001, uh, which that's a long time ago because I wasn't even here then. Uh, so, <clears throat> um, just really proud of the team. It was a, it was a complete effort, all three phases. Um, you know, no turnovers on offense and no sacks. We haven't lost a game since since 2011 when we have no sacks. Uh, so really, that's a it's a really good defense. And so to be able to control the line of scrimmage. Uh, you know, six of 14 on third down. Uh, again, four of four in the red zone. Continue to do a great job there. No sacks. DJ was awesome. Career high, 73 yards rushing, two touchdowns. Um, and uh, just lots of guys touching the ball. You know, we got a lot of guys you know, having opportunities to, to handle the ball, uh, which that's really when we're at our best, I think. And uh, guys are just starting to kind of find their groove as playmakers. DJ in total command. Uh, <clears throat> of, of what we're doing. I thought the two-minute drive right before the half was huge. Um, and uh, three or four on field goal. And, and something that, you know, doesn't show up in the stats, but our coverage was outstanding tonight. Punt coverage, kickoff coverage, because they're a dangerous return team, and we didn't let them get going. You know, that's a, they, they got the ability to really create a spark in the return game, and we didn't, we didn't allow that to happen. So I'm really proud of our coverage. We worked really hard. And then, uh, but to me, I thought the defense won the game in the second half. And, um, you know, we had two turnovers and we had 10 points off turnovers. And the difference in the game was 10 points. And to come out in that second half and set the tone, we had three sacks on them. Again, they, didn't, they, they couldn't run the ball. Um, obviously disappointed in a couple of plays, you know, we, where, we, where we, we busted the third and 16 in the first half when they just vomit um, and, and uh, the busted play for the touchdown. We don't cover the, you know, the, the tight end, uh, got beat on a cover two. I mean, but there were, some, there were some things in the first half, but man, we came out in that second half and I thought they played a really, really, it, it's a shame that we had the, I didn't see it, but they said he hit it, the quarterback late. Um, I don't know, what'd y'all think? Uh, did he hit him late? Maybe, I need, that's, that's the best you got? A bump, love tap? Uh, close. Well, anyway, it's a shame because that was a uh, that was a great play by McGuire, but to get those two turnovers, I thought our D line won the day, and uh, we we got after the quarterback and and we cleaned it up. But man, Makuba goes out, Mickens goes out. You're already down a couple guys, and how about Okoval going in there and uh, Pride, you know. He, he got baptized last week in, in Winston-Salem, but he, he, his, he, the game was a little slower to him tonight. He was a little more prepared, a little more focused, and a little more ready, and I'm really proud of him. I, I, it was a big, big play. Uh, so defensively, you know, again, just turnovers, 279 total yards, but 
them not being able to get anything going in the run game was 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 big for us. Um, so just a special night, uh, five and zero. Oh, that's what we hope to be. We're building momentum. We still got a lot to improve on, um, but it's back to back really tough weeks, and uh, these guys just keep finding a way and. You know, we're still in control in the division. That's where we wanted to be. So we'll enjoy it tomorrow and then, uh, you know, reload. BC will be the biggest game of the year for us. And I know they had a big win today as well over Louisville. So it'll be a, it's never an easy place to play. Um, so we just, just got to keep showing up and putting the work in, man. Keep having, I thought we won this game Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. I probably had the best Wednesday, Thursday, Friday practice we've had all year. And really only the second normal week that we've had. You know, uh, the Georgia Tech wasn't a normal week, and then it was a short week for Furman. And then uh, we had the normal week for La Tech. That was good. And then Wake Forest, we had, you know, we flew to Maryland for a funeral and, you know, practiced at 8 o'clock at night. And, uh, you know, this is really only the second normal week that we've had. And uh, so, you know, it, it all, it's all starts with how we prepare. And I thought the guys really – I was not happy with Tuesday practice, and I, I thought that uh, off defensively, and I thought that that we really came together on Wednesday, and the leadership of this team, and and uh, just really, really, really the type of practice that you need to have um, to to win these type of games. So, a great win for us, you know, 37 in a row to tie a record, an ACC record. Uh, you know, to be a part of that, I don't even really have words for that. I mean, I can't, it's hard for me to process that. <laughs> I mean, I can't even really wrap my mind around that. Um, and so, you know, I guess we tied Bobby Bowden's record, the Florida State teams, whenever that was. But, um, and I mean, it's just, it's just incredible. And, you know, the reason, that's what I told this team, the reason we had an opportunity to do that tonight and be a part of something special like that is, is because of all those teams before that have taken pride in, in playing in the Valley. And because of the great crowd, the great atmosphere that we have, it's a special place. And man, it's, uh, it, it's, it's always been great. But man, you, you know, with all the new stuff going on, it's, it's, it's amazing. It really is. It's a, it's, a, it's a special environment. And, you know, we had a lot of people here tonight and thankful we were able to find a way to win. First drive defensively of the second half, just to kind of set the tone. Yeah, it's, it, it was huge, you know, because uh, they won the toss and obviously deferred, so they're getting the ball. And, uh, you know, we uh, – Barrett Carter came right out the gate. And, you know, I thought West thought West did a great job tonight as far as just when we needed to pressure. And, you know, we did some good things coverage-wise. Um, and, you know, just – Kind of played our guys' strengths a little bit, uh, did a good job. But man, I thought our D lineman got after him. We missed a couple. We had a couple more that we had a chance to get, but it was huge. Three and out, right out of the gate. And um, so, you know, just uh, proud of how they competed in that second half. After both, uh, Jake said that uh, you, you drew that play up on the bootleg right there on the sidelines. Can you talk about that and the <laughs> yeah. conversations that went into it? Yeah, I thought I was back in. 1992 Alabama uh, all over again. You know, I just felt like that, um, you know, we, we, we had milked the clock, made them use their timeouts, and, you know, I knew they knew we were going to run the ball right there. And um, yeah, we've done a little bit under center this year, not a lot, but, yeah, I just, uh, I just, I just said we're going to go under center right here and we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna run our inside zone and really with a hard fake. And you got to have a little bit of guts because you're going to a little pause, and then you're just coming out the back door. And I think they're going to sell out, you know, to try to just overplay it. And uh, so, you know, it worked out. And I was just really, really coaching him on, hey, don't go out of bounds. You know, let's, like, worst case scenario, we're going to kick this field goal right here, but let's keep the clock running. Let's don't, don't run out of bounds. But, you know, I said, you've got a good chance. A good chance this thing's going to pop. And uh, so it did. Uh, you know, they, they overplayed it. And, you know, it worked out. So it was a nice, uh, Nice play by DJ. Coach, you kind of made the ball disappear on that play. Um, we feel, don't hear people talk a lot about quarterbacks' ball handling skills, yep. but that's that's something he's pretty adept at, isn't it? They're carrying out those picks. Yeah, he's gotten a lot better. You know, that was one of the things. That was one of the areas he needed to improve. That where where you know we would give him a loaf last year when he didn't carry out his fate the way he needed to. You know, uh, you know that's the game within the game. You know, and you don't ever know who you're going to affect. You might might you might hold one guy just a smidge. And boom, that, that, that run pops because you carry out your fake the right way. So the, just those little details, he's just, 
I mean, he's just sold out in every area. And uh, so, you know, it was a great little pause, great little fake, a little, little bit of courage, and, uh, you know, good execution on his part. But he's done that in, in all of our, our run games. I mean, he's made some big plays down at the touchdown on the, on the goal line, you know, great decision there on the pool and a great, good, great good ride. Uh, so he's, uh, man, he's really proud of him. I mean, he's been, uh, he's been our leader. I mean, he's one of the most respected kids we've had around here. I mean, these guys love him, and how can you not? I mean, he's just a, he's just, he's just tough, and he just, you know, <laughs> he missed a couple. He missed Bo in the first half. That's that's a huge play, and then he would have had zero, um, but we, we got pressured, and he had to kind of get rid of it a little early, and then you know, great throw to Bo, the one we didn't want him to make on the little sluggo, but. Um, man, he made some plays. He's just got he's just got good poise and good command, and then so confident running the football now, and it just makes everything else uh, you know go for us. And he's spreading the ball around and making good decisions in the run game, making good decisions in our protect our protection scheme. So it's really really proud of him. But the biggest thing is is he's just putting his heart and soul into everything he's doing. What do you think it meant to Wiggins, and I guess proud too, that you said, hey, I'm gonna. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, had a good meeting with Wiggins on uh, two Monday, Monday um, of last week because I just thought he was showed a lot of immaturity last week. Very immature, uh, no poise, um, completely out of his game. Just you know, and he's not an experienced player, but you know, just from the, the rep, a, a bad call, or or you know. Whatever's going on between him and the receiver, or somebody makes a big play, and you know he just—I thought he did a much better job tonight. He really responded to coaching this week, and that's what you'd love to see. You know, these are young people, and you know that's that's why we're here. But he he can be a great player. He's just got a—he's a little bit of an emotional guy, and you can't be emotional. You know, you can you can—it's a game of emotion, but you got to channel that emotion into um, execution. You know, uh, so as we say all the time, it's not just effort, it's effort with an emphasis on technique. And uh, so I thought he just really played within himself. He was locked in, he was poised, and, and you know, he, he had a great result tonight. I mean, he was really close on a couple of plays. Um, and then for Toriano uh, to, to come back and have a great week of practice and to really, I think, just his mindset was different. That's a, a big lesson for him last, last week, too, because he wasn't really ready. Uh, I did think he competed last week, but he wasn't really ready. And so I think he was just ready, you know. And uh, so, you know, great job by those guys. And for Koval to have to be ready to go in there, uh, you know, he got, the, he got hit pretty hard there in the stomach, knocked the breath out of him. But uh, really proud of him too. So, and tough. It's tough when you're missing a lot of guys, but, but they'll all be back and uh, we'll keep building. And the good news is, is we're getting a lot of experience we got a lot of guys in these first five games that have gotten a ton of experience that's going to pay off for us down the road uh, for sure. So, you know, just really, uh, you know, happy about that. Um, how about that run by Maffa? You know, I mean, his, he's going to have one of those games where everybody's going to go, wow, it's coming. And, and I think that was big for him tonight uh, and his confidence because that was a big time run, you know, got, ran right through a hip tackle and, you uh, Got a big first down for us and allowed us to put it away. Devin, you talked a lot this week about communication up front just being important with everything yep. that State likes to do on defense and zero <coughs> sacks and like the offensive line protected really well. Yeah, everybody, and it's the quarterback, you know, it's the it's the OL, it's the tight ends, it's the running backs, it's everybody. But you know, they're 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 that, you know, stack front, uh, Oki front there, three man with, with the three backers, and you never really know where they're coming from. They do a good job of run blitzing and, and, and pressure, zone pressure and, and blitzing. And so you've got to really be, and they're all three, those three backers are really good players. Uh, so just picking things up in the run game, uh, IDing things correctly, you know, protection wise, and then, um, you know, just. Uh, being able to get to them on the second level and win those matchups at the point of attack were big. And again, they're hard. That's a tough, tough group right there. They, they're, a, you know, structurally how they play. Um, so I was, I was really proud of our guys. We had some tough, gritty yards. 
Uh, plenty of things we'll have to clean up where we did, you know, had a couple guys we turned loose a couple times. Uh, but, uh, you know, again, no sacks is, is, a, is a credit for, to everyone involved. Coach Doug. Uh, the win was in the numbers tonight, 60th win against NC State all time, third opponent with 60 plus wins against in Clemson history, 18 and four since 2000. And you outscored them 24 to 10 after the 10 to six deficit. I mean, just wrapping all that up, just got to be a great night overall. And how you kind of wrap it up into a bow on tonight's performance? Yeah, I mean, I mean, this is it's a top 10 matchup, you know. Um, you know, they they. Uh, I, you know, I, I didn't know this until yesterday that it was their first ever top ten matchup, and uh, and so I was I was curious to how many we've had. I didn't know that either, and uh, so I think this was maybe our twenty eighth or twenty seventh in school history, maybe the twenty first or so, just since since two thousand twelve, and so uh, you know we've had a lot of experience in those type of games. I mean, it's a, it, it's a big one. It's a big big game, um, and they're all big, but but this is a, a game that. You know, a team that beat us last last year, a team we I thought played more physical than we did. We didn't win the trenches. We didn't play smart. We were undisciplined. We jumped offside four times up there. We turned the ball over. We had, you know, you name it. Uh, we did not make plays. And uh, so to be able to come back this year, and, and you know, they're basically the same team. I mean, they're – that's a really – they got some dudes, man. I mean, it's like a coaching staff out there playing. Last two weeks uh, between Wake and NC State, I mean, they got a bunch of guys on both sides of the ball that are captains and all-conference players and very experienced, played a lot of ball. So um, to come back and, and play the way we did this year, I, I'm just really proud of our players. I'm proud of our staff. Um, you know, the staff is growing too. The staff is growing. Staff is developing. And uh, so we're in a good spot and see if we can find a way to win another one. How big, was that, how big was that drive right there at the end of the half after they just scored to go yeah. back down there and take it? Huge. Game? That was huge. I mean, it's some big plays in that. Um, but a, a huge answer to be able to get the momentum, you know, going in there at half. And uh, and I thought it was also big to to go up 10 going into the fourth quarter, you know, to, to get those points, um, you know, off the turnover. And that was big. Um, but you just, you know, you knew they weren't going to quit and you just had to keep battling. I wish we could have turned a field goal or two into a touchdown. So those are, you know, some opportunities that we can take advantage of as we move forward. But um, just a complete game and a complete effort on everybody. But that 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 two minute drive was something we can gain a lot of confidence from for sure. Coach, you mentioned that uh, two great teams you just beat, no turnovers in those two games. How proud are you of, of the guys taking care of the ball the way they have? Well, I mean, there's no bigger factor in football than turnovers and big plays. I mean, it's just that simple. I mean, if you if you win the turnover margin and you have at least two more big plays in the opponent, you win about 98% of the time. So there's just nothing more important than that. It's all about the ball, you know, taking care of it and getting it. Um, and so we've done a good job of that. Hopefully we can continue to do that. And then, you know, and then being efficient. I mean, the first half we had the, we had the ball four possessions. That was like the f fastest half of football in the first quarter. It was crazy. Uh, I don't know what the time of possession was in that first quarter. It was, it was, it was crazy. Um, but we had um, we had four possessions and scored three times. You know, but you you kind of went into halftime a little frustrated. Uh, so just not a ton of possessions. I don't know what what we end up play wise. I mean, we only had what do we have? How many plays do we have? 60-something, 60 68 plays. Uh, but, you know, we, we took advantage of our opportunities and were efficient and, and uh, you know, glad we were able to punch that last one in. Coach, what does it say about this team that's able to win in different ways five games into a season? Well, that's what good teams do. It's never perfect. Uh, you know, you, you, you got it. Great teams can win different ways. You know, it's not always the same pitch, right? you you got, you got to be able to. Hit the fastball, the curveball, the change up. You got to have them all. You know, uh, you you can't you can't just uh, think you're going to win one way week in and week out. You know, somewhere along the line, the offense like last week, it's going to have to go win it. And you know, there's games where the defense. I thought the defense in the Georgia Tech game really just kind of allowed us to kind of get our wind in ourselves a little bit. Uh, and there, there will be special teams. I mean, you, you have to find a way to win. It's, it's never, you know, and that's the name of the game. And uh, it was our goal tonight, just whatever it took to win the game. But 
I think it's a good sign that they believe they can win no matter what, uh, whether they're you know, on the road and down uh, every time you take the field in the second half, and, hey, you got to go answer, uh, or, hey, you need to stop you know, at a critical juncture to, to win it. So just to, or you need to make a 52-yard field goal uh, to give yourself a chance. Uh, it's, it's good. Perfect in the red zone this year. Obviously, that involves the kicking game as well. But what does that say about your mentality when you guys get in? You know? Yeah, I mean, again, um, I mean, everything that we struggled with last year after five games, I mean, we couldn't score. We're scoring points. We were poor on third down. We, we were, we're excellent in third down. We were poor in the red zone. We're now number one in the country in the red zone. Um, so I'm just really proud of that. I mean, we couldn't make we had a hard time making big plays. Now the big plays are back. We didn't get any smarter as coaches. Uh, you know, we just we just a little more experienced, a little more mature, healthier, and we're just better. And our quarterback's playing uh, better, and he's in a he's in a good spot. So, just really, I mean, that's name of the game's points. You get down in that red zone, you got to come away with points, and when you got. Uh, the ability to win matchups, and you got a quarterback uh, that, that's a factor in the run game, and you got backs, the ability to run the ball a little bit in the red zone, that, that's huge, and then a kicker. So we got a good combination of things that you need to, to be a good red zone team. Yeah, but offensively, just the chemistry the guys have, whether it be improvising with a, a scramble drill or like DJ today, the Shipley just kind of, it seems like that chemistry is really good. Yeah, he just, he, well, I mean, he understands where everybody is. You know, he knows where everybody's going. And uh, you know that was a that was a that was a heck of a play. Uh, that was C.J. Spiller esque right there. Except C.J. would have scored. Uh, <laughs> I, and I told Ship of that. Uh, but that was that. What, I mean, what a ball play, you know. And he's just got real command, and and he's comfortable in the pocket. You know, those guys are doing an amazing job protecting for him, and he's just very very comfortable. Um, so, I mean, the one that he missed Bo on. I mean, he had all day. He just got a little antsy and. Kind of, it's a slow developing play, and he just got a little impatient on that one. But um, you know, it's it's. Uh, I mean, these guys they believe they've got a lot of chemistry. They've worked hard on it, you know, since January, and uh, hopefully we can continue to to have that confidence, and because they really think they can go score, and you know, that's ninety percent of the battle. Coach PT uh, misses first field goal of the season tonight, but. Bounced right back and, and made a big one. Um, shows a lot about his mental toughness, doesn't it? Yeah, shows he's human. Uh, he missed one, but absolutely shows his maturity, shows his mentality. As you say there, I mean he's he's a he's a big time veteran, and I mean he I had no doubt he was going to make that last one. I had zero doubt. Um, he don't usually ever miss two in a row, you know, even in practice. I mean he's just got a he's just got a lot of mental toughness to him that way, and uh, proud of him. Yeah, it's what's that? What's the words? N S W F. Uh, what's that? What's not yeah? Not safe for work. Is that what it is? Uh, it's probably it's probably that. Uh, <laughs> I was not not real happy um, with with uh, kind of where we were right there, you know, but. Um, it's all good. What's that? Brian health wise. Uh, he, he's good. He's good. You know, it's been a, I mean, that's another thing. I mean, you know, what a, what a week. Um, you know, I don't know what all has been said, if anything, or put out on him, but, you know, it's a non football medical issue that he had and, uh, really scary and just, what his family did not need to deal with at this point, uh, but thank. And then you got a lot of waiting and a lot of stuff, you know. But it all turned out great. Uh, we got really good news yesterday, so uh, <clears throat> you know we feel great about that. But it but it was a really tough three or four days for him and his family, uh, especially with all that they've been through. And uh, so you know, hopefully. Everything will check out, you know, tomorrow again, and, and we'll get him back rolling this week, hopefully. <clears throat> yeah, on Tuesday, you talked about how special Leary and other quarterbacks are in this ACC. Your defense stepped up tonight. Describe how this game could be a building block to come later this season 
with the type of performance they had tonight? Yeah, well, games like this give you confidence. Uh, and I think that this team, they've just been kind of knocking on the door of really truly believing in themselves. You know, and the win like they won last week and then to turn around and beat a really good team uh, that beat them last year, it's the kind of it's the kind of win that can kind of solidify that belief and that confidence and this team, this team can this team can be great. They can be special. You know, we got a lot we still gotta clean up things, but but if they'll just keep showing up with the right work workman like attitude, um, they'll keep getting better. You know, keep keep I tell them all the time, it's it's what you do in the dark. That's how you earn the right to perform under the lights. You know, it's, it's what you do in the dark. Nobody's watching. It's how you practice. Um, you know, so that's, that's what this team is learning and really buying into. And if they'll continue to do that, and, and a win like this just kind of helps create that confidence and, and furthers that buy-in of what it takes. Because as I tell them all the time, I can't change what it takes. I know what it takes, <laughs> but you got to be willing to do what it takes. And so, um, it, I think it does a lot for him. Coach, I was just curious that opening drive, you marched right down the field um, on fourth and goal there. Did you, did you think about it at all about going for it, or did you just have too much respect for that defense and not to take the three points? Yeah, no, no, we needed those points. Um, it was, it was what fourth and three or something like that, and you know, I mean, you get a good drive like that, you don't come away with points. It's almost like a turnover, you know. Uh, fourth and one, probably maybe maybe different, but fourth and three. Uh, and again, yes, a lot of respect for for them and their defense. You know, let's let's get on the board and um, you know let's keep moving. So um, I hate we didn't punch that one in. There was a couple I wish we we could have we could have had back, but and that was one of them. But uh, you know, to get to, to get some momentum early like that, in a game like that, I think is important. Coach, you got to be really proud to see three alums from the Hall of Fame and Jacoby, Daquan, and. Wayne. Yep. Just think about the lineage and the legacy they left and what an honor it was for them to go yeah. such a great class. Well, first of all, it's crazy that I've been here long enough to have Hall of Famers now. Uh, holy cow. Uh, it's crazy. And I got a chance to see Michael Palmer. I got a chance to see uh, Marcus Gilchrist tonight, Cody Sensabaugh. You know, I didn't get to see uh, Christian, but I heard he was around. Uh, but I didn't get a chance to see him, uh, unfortunately. But you know, it's just it's just awesome. You know, I'm proud of Jacoby. You know, he's like a really like a son to me. I, I love Jacoby, and um, you know, he was in my last group of guys that I was you know running the room with, uh, coaching. Uh, I'm really proud of of him. And then you know, we got Daquan here. You know, they, Daquan was Jeff. I called down and Jeff let him come yesterday uh, so he could be here. You know, so he was here for the luncheon, the drop in, and then for the event last night, and then. We got him back down there for their game today. Um, you know, I mean, our first Nagurski winner, um, and really proud of him. And and then uh, Dwayne Allen. I mean, he's 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 uh, he's special. And just you know, we had an event Thursday night, and he was actually the speaker at it. Did an awesome job. So all three of those guys so deserving, and uh, got such great memories of all of them, and great moments, and conversations, and. You know, the, you know, to look at them now, and you know, Dwayne is 32. Uh, I think Jacoby's 33. It's just I can't even wrap my mind around that. You know, but I told them they're getting older. Uh, so, really happy for them, proud of them, and glad their families were able to be here and be a part of it. Yeah, but do you have an update on uh, Mickens or anyone else? <laughs> Mickens is is fine. He he he. Uh, uh, you know, he he. We'll see where he is tomorrow. But I thought it was his shoulder, but it wasn't. You know, so that was good. And I, I don't know who else. Was there anybody else? Uh, Parks. Oh, he came back. He came back. Moving okay. Fred out of the starting lineup, is that just a performance based yeah. decision? Yeah. I mean, you watched the game last week. Uh, <laughs> I mean, it was a pretty easy decision to make. Had to give somebody else an opportunity. So, you know, we moved Makuba over there. And um, Sheridan couldn't go. He, we thought he was, we actually thought he was going to be able to play as of yesterday. But he just he, he just wasn't quite there, and then Malcolm same thing. So we, we slid Makuba over there because we really we really have a lot of confidence in Mickens and JP and, and, and Tyler, you know, and now and Koval's coming. So um, we felt like that was our best lineup, you know, putting Makuba in there and Nate, uh, like how Nate practiced and you know Fred Fred will, Fred will bounce back, but 
yeah, I mean, it's a game of performance. And, uh, you know, we, we, we just felt like uh, Makuba gave us a little better shot. And then, and then uh, we thought Toriano played better last week, too. So that's where we're. The targeting ball, Makuba, what was your reaction to that when you see him there? Oh, man. Uh, probably the right call. I mean, I need to see it again. But, you know, you, you got to keep your head up. And uh, so it's prob probably the right call there. Any questions for Coach from Zoom? All right, thank Man, you, Coach. Zoom, they checked out a long time ago. <laughs> uh, <laughs> thank you.